And in Colorado, it's a fitness test that stands between the young black-footed ferrets and a life in the wild. It's kind of like sending the kids off to their first day of school. They have 30 days to prove that they can live like wild ferrets. If they make the grade, they'll go back to the wild at one of the release sites. Program leader Paul Marinari has a series of outdoor pens where the kits and their mums can learn the basics of life in the wild. So the ferret bus has landed at pen C7, so I'm just gonna place them in here by one of the burrows. And you have to wonder what's going through their minds. They spent their first 90 days in a relatively small cage, and now they come out here and it's like, wow, big world, grass, wind, rain, snow, you know, coyote tallying in the distance. So it's, it's that next step. Their mum has been in one of these pens before and quickly gives her new accommodation the once over. are likely to take more than a bit of persuading before they dare step foot into this brave new world. The mom's trying to get the kits out of the box and into the burrow, and the kits are trying to get mom from the burrow into the box. You have to imagine they've spent their first 90 days, that's home to them, so it's, uh, it's that one step out of that box. Um, it's a totally different world. Mum has a total of five reluctant youngsters to try to coax out into an uncertain future. Any time you deal with captive animals, you're going to see not only the births, which are very exciting, but also the mortalities. They may not all survive to be released into the wild. So, what's on the agenda? It's all about learning to live in burrows and eating unfamiliar food. And eventually, they're going to have to learn to catch their own supper in the form of live prairie dogs. While one family starts this 30-day preparation process, another is finishing theirs. So Paul's going to gather them up for stage three. We put uh, mom and three kits in this pan a little more than a month ago. So we're trying to trap them up. Uh, these three kits are scheduled for uh, reintroduction in New Mexico. Yep, you can see the kit. It's a female kit. It's a little heavy, but not too bad. And that chatter they make is just uh, agitation chatter that they have. But we'll get them inside and get them all ready to go. Three more ferrets going back to the wild is great news. But before they can leave for good, they have to go through one more process. First, they need two vaccinations, one against canine distemper and the other against sylvatic plague, a disease fatal to the ferrets. On top of this, they get a thorough health check, a dose of antibiotics and a transponder, all designed to give them the best possible chance of survival. It's uh, the same thing as a microchip that you put in dogs and cats. It's just a unique identification number and we'll just make sure... In total, 12 kits are going to be released this time round. Today, a box in Colorado, and tomorrow, a new life living wild on the plains of New Mexico. This project shows what can be achieved when you have a whole government department supporting your breeding programme.